Hey, hello YouTube players. Free Codes FEM Workbench. Is it okay? It's freeware after all. So, my journey began much like yours, from YouTube tutorials. There wasn't a lot on the FEM Workbench and currently there's only a few videos, perhaps just enough to get you started. There's a lot to learn and a lot to take in and I'm really not sure where to start. Two things are going to happen in the next 90 seconds. Okay, Jack, I'm glad you're going to plan. One, calibrate. Two, control. I think I'm going to need a bit more than 90 seconds, though. Calibration requires an example, and I went with a 150UB beam on a 2 meter wide portal frame with 100UC as the 5 minute columns. I soon learned that my lower and upper limits were going to be complex if I traveled down this road. So the frame was simplified for calibration on the beam alone. The upper limit for a beam in bending can be obtained analytically. It simulates a pinned roller beam support and no moment is being carried into the supporting reactions. The flanges are carrying all the bending stresses. The spreadsheet, steel beam and strand seven student version returned 57 megapascals. As the beam alone in FEM had 52 megapascals one meter stress, it was time to work out what was the lower limit for the beam stress as we fixed joint supports absorbing some of the bending. A portal frame joint is neither fixed or pin. It's a beam column connection. Additional bolting plate stiffness transferring moment into the connection will interpolate beam stresses to something in between the upper and lower limits. Strand 7 and steel beam returned similar results of 38 megapascals and 0.3 millimeters deflection for the fixed support lower limit scenario. Limiting the fixed restraint to just one edge on the flange to see if the UDL beam lighting would simulate a pin support and get closer to the upper limit. 52 megapascals and 0.45 millimeters deflection was closer, but it wasn't quite there yet. I had neglected the flange web radius and perhaps it had something to do with it. However, all info on meshing pointed to keeping the mesh as simple as possible, or was it still partially fully restrained? As the stresses generated in the portal frame analysis were inside the lower and upper limits, perhaps I should have just walked away there and then, but no, my curiosity got the better of me, and I redrew the UB with radiuses and M meshed at a crazy small 0.5 millimeters. One hour and 38 minutes later, Calculix failed. There was no results file, even though it said it had solved it okay. So you guessed it. Another one and a half hours of my life in the name of science. I was happy, content even knowing that the simplified mesh was inside the limits, knowing that the portal frame was parametric reusable to a multitude of scenarios, including but not limited to UDL, point loads, line loads, and lower flange loading. Does the post-processing inside FreeCAD's FEM get me to the next stage in structural analysis? Yes, no, and not really. However, Power Review is the next stop for a detailed post-process force analysis. Does FEM or Power Review combine and compete with Strand 7? I feel like saying they're not even in the same ballpark. But I haven't dived deeper into Paraview as of yet. What I do like about the combo is that the file and your information is private and savable, but most of all free. So if you're in industry and tired of the software nightmare, support FreeCAD in any way, shape or form. The developers say by version 1.0, it will compete with any other CAD package. FreeCAD 0.19 has been released and it does a lot already in some ways more than others. The learning curve is steep, to be honest. FreeCAD could at least try and standardize, but that's my opinion. I'm not the one reinventing the wheel. As you can see, FreeCAD is parametric. The computational capability of the driving spreadsheet is fairly primitive, but the functionality is also evolving. I'm actually driving four different model scenarios, which include no less than 10 parametric bodies on average 
in this file and and there's been some editing applied for the sake of visual interest Getting a multi-bodied analysis started begins in the part workbench. And requires selecting the included bodies in the tree. Creating a compound. Selecting that newly created compound and applying the boolean fragments command. You need to reselect that boolean fragment in the tree again and on the data tab change the mode to comp solid after which you need to apply a compound filter. Run a geometry check, and if you have one item in the comp solid, you're good to go. Apply your restraints, loads, self-weight, and assign materials for each and every body. Running a mesh is a science unto itself, but if you have problems, try decreasing the mesh. It mostly works for me. Avoid fillets, chamfers. Simple is better. Sometimes in Gmesh, you'll get a warning. The simulation should still run though. If you get an error on the mesh, don't even try. Well, I'm out. Hopefully you're sourced what you're looking for. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll put the link to supporting FreeCAD in the description.